welcome back. Today we're going to talk about learning games. I decided to get learning games this year because I thought maybe on rough days we could do those instead of a regular work and still be learning. So that's the first one I want to show you. It's a one player game. I don't remember what it's called but I'll link it below. So it has this little booklet and they have a key. So they have starter, junior, expert, and master. And then you have a picture with the truck to use and then the box to use and you have to figure out how to put it in there so it's flat on top. And then they have the answer on the back. And it gets harder as you go through. It's a good spatial logic game. It's a lot harder than you'd think it would be. I don't like puzzles. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of not my forte. But they have three little trucks. They all have different shapes. And then these things actually can come apart so you can switch them if you wanted to. If you have boys like mine, that would probably happen in your house. My boys love to take toys apart and root <laughs> to them. It's kind of like Sid on Toy Story, but not as creepy. I've got these wooden pattern blocks. They're not really a game per se, but it is a learning activity. These are also just fun for kids to do while I'm reading aloud. They just make patterns on the floor. I've got these Storymatic Kids cards, and so you take turns drawing different colored cards and then you tell a story together as a group. So I thought that'd be really fun to do. I've had this game for a while. It's Find It Fast. So each card has a bunch of animals on it and there's always one match between all the cards. I'm not sure how they designed that, but it's really cool. And it's really great for visual discrimination and it's just really fun. I got a little 50 States puzzle at the dollar store. We got Clumsy Thief, but it's a money game. You need to equal $100 to win the game. We got the Moby game. And these little tags you see were part of a distance learning program. So we do homeschool, but we just check in with the teacher once a week, and then we get to borrow from the library 30 things per kid per year, plus they pay for curriculum up to a certain amount per kid. So it's awesome. Anyway, this is like a crossword puzzle, but you do it with equations and stuff. We've got this one, and it's a dragon time, and the premise of it is you cast spells, but the spells are just number cards. These are the spells, and it says eight on it. <laughs> so you're not actually doing pretend magic or anything. And then you have to like to save the dragons or something. Oh no, it's Apprentice the Great Dragon Master. So I thought that'd be a really fun way to work on times tables. I got these wrap ups, the math ones. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and fractions. And each one has, they're pretty thick, so each one has a bunch of them on the key ring. I also got these All About America States and Capitals wrap ups. These are from Osborne. So we are actually doing the Waldock Quay States curriculum this year. So I thought this would go perfectly with that. Got money bags. It's a combining coins and money kind of thing. Here's a snap it up. So it's addition and subtraction skills. It's a card game. Snap it up. And this is for spelling, reading, word families. Science Ninja. It's a chemistry game. To match element cards to make molecules. I got fraction puzzles. It's kind of a Montessori style thing in that it's self-correcting. So I have this board in here and then they have these little foam pieces that have the fractions on them. And they have these cards that say what tiles you need. And these are those ones, and you put them in the circles, and then you put the card in the slot, and then you have to figure out which ones go in there. The cards get harder as you go. We have this allowance game. This was really good for making change. It's pretty fun, too. It's kind of like a Monopoly-style game. Every time you pass the bank, you get interest if you put money in, which is pretty cool. We have sums in space. They have two game modes, classic or cooperative. So you can work together to finish as a team, or race to finish. And this is single digit addition and subtraction, odds and evens, and comparative numbers. So it has multiple math concepts it covers. This one has been really fun. It's IC10. Even my second and third grader liked it. You have these little fish discs and on the back of each one is a number. So you turn them all over and then you take turns flipping two. Whoever sees a combo that makes 10 yells IC10 and then they get that match. And it could be any combination, like two numbers, three numbers, whatever. And then they have some shark ones, so you can find one. So if you get a shark, you have to put, I think the direction said you have to put all your cards back, but I knew that would cause tears, so we changed it to just putting one match back. <laughs> because as a parent, you can change rules for games. Now we have this. I don't know if you can see it. These are locks with matching keys. So they have capital letters on the locks and a picture that starts without that sound. And they have keys that are lowercase, you have to match them to the lock. And they only fit the right lock, which is really nice because sometimes you get stuff from the dollar store and all the puzzle pieces have the exact same shape. No, that's not very helpful. So it's really nice that it won't fit ones that don't match. That really helps the kids learn. This is mostly for my kindergartner. I've had this for years. All the kids have liked it. Got this really cool game at Cabela's. We love to camp as a family. 
I'd love to stay home more while my husband takes the kids camping, but I go too sometimes. <laughs> and it's a camping game and you go around and you learn trivia. And each card has four different levels of play. So you could have a five-year-old and they could do the first level and you could have an adult doing the last level. It's so like this one and it's a cardinal. And the first question is, what bird is pictured above? Then you have A, B, and C. The second one is, what is the color of the male cardinal? Does the cardinal migrate every year? And how many states have the cardinal as a state bird? So the questions on the fourth level are kind of tricky. But yeah, this is, this is fun. We like this game a lot. We have an alphabet puzzle. My daughter does know her alphabet, but it's just always good to keep reinforcing that so that it doesn't get forgotten. My daughter's a kindergartner. I got Zingo Sight Words. It's a bingo game. Since we're learning about the 50 states through the Waldock Way curriculum this year, I got a bunch of state games. This is a Scrambled States of America. You have 10 days in the USA. It's a traveling game. You have to use planes and stuff. Twin states and capitals. And then we got Elementio, another chemistry game. Since we're studying chemistry this year. They have little cool pictures that go with each element to help you remember them. I got Rummy Roots for vocabulary. And this one has four games in it. And it teaches 42 Greek and Latin words. We have this one. It's a Dino Math Tracks game. This has been a huge hit in our house. It has three levels of play really on the first level. So the back of the board looks like this. And each person has four dinosaurs. And you put the colors on these different pathways. And they represent thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. And so you roll the four dice and then you can arrange them any way you want. And then you can go there. And the first person that gets all their dinosaurs to the end wins. And they have more complicated levels. So that's just the first level of play. But my kids love it. And they can all play together without me. And we have Equilibrio is the last game. This is a balance logic game. I thought this would be good just for a one player game. And also because we are doing architecture this year, it kind of just goes along with it. And this is also a logic game. It has the easier cards at the beginning, make it harder as you go. You have to build it and balance the different things. So that's what we have for games this year. It's a lot. I'm not really a game person, but my kids love games. And so I thought that'd be good to just put in the curriculum and maybe we could have a game day every other week or use it as an incentive if they get done early, that kind of thing. And then they're still learning but having fun. Okay, leave your favorite game for this age group down in the comments. I'd love to see them. Please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.